Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about Inspire, a simple model, a question from a student and how to fix it. Now, I get a lot of questions and some of those questions I get regularly. And so I can also point a little bit out what are the common problems or things, challenges you, you're, you're facing with Inspire. And I want to just take a chance with this model and take a look at it on this video, see what did go wrong, how to fix it and give some tips along the way. So without further ado, let's jump into it. This was the model. I will also quickly show you the uh, text I got with it. Now, basically this is the problem. You see, you have a geometry. Um, it's also a bit, little bit more detailed here, what the geometry looks like. And um, you have some forces, one force here, 30 kilonewtons pulling, pulling down here. And um, then you have supports and yeah. So basically the question of the student was how to get the reaction forces with Inspire. And um, yeah, so this is basically um, the thing. And um, yeah, so let's look at that. Okay. So basically let's um, look at the model. Um, this is the model I got uh, sent from the student. And um, one quick way of checking the model is to go with the motion analysis tool and just analyze motion, because then you can see if the model is constrained correctly or not. And I'm doing that, press continue, and you can see it's not really that well constrained, right? So there's something wrong here. Uh, we want to fix that. So basically the constraints were applied here on the surfaces, but actually what the student wanted to do was to create a joint here. And also those part here is constrained on its own, but it has no connection to the rods. And so this was the problem. All right, let's, let's check now how to do this correctly. Let's go, let's get rid of all the supports. So we have just a force here and let's start with the joint. So joint here, go and find, you will see it finds automatically the soul. Go here, click once and just go with the pin. Should be all right. Um, there will maybe be some rotation here. That's why you will have to lock this joint to go here to be unlocked. It's just a problem with um, with SimSolid on OptiStruct, this should be fine. Okay, now let's move on. You now want to constrain it here. And um, basically, you don't need this parts because if you constrain it directly at the rods, then there's no need for a connection and you don't have an additional part, which just costs you calculation time. So that makes no sense to keep that. All right, so let's move, let's remove all those parts and let's constrain it with hinges on those two parts. Now this is done at structure constraints and click there. Ah, oh, sorry, that was wrong. Click here that we have the surface and just do that as a hinge. So rotation will be free. Same thing here as a hinge. By the way, you can also do that here by unchecking the rotational degree of freedom that it's not fixed in this direction and we're done. Now, I think that would be it. Let's see if this now holds to the motion solve. If I now click analyze motion, I should not have a problem and it also should continue and this nothing should move. So this is a good sign. And um, yeah, seems about right. So um, good. Now I think I can do the calculation. Mm, before I do that, let me quickly um, tell you what I did first, because it's always a good idea to do a little hunt calc. That means you just take a look at the problem and just calculate for yourself what you think should be the result for the for the reaction forces. And I did that already for you. That would be this thing. Uh, no, I think this one this was not the right version because there was a, a mistake left in here. Yeah, this would be the right version. All right. So you see that um, this is now um, structural mechanics. 101. You have a little truss system, you have bearings, we have a fixed bearing with a loose bearing. You can see that um, here, 
So we'll just point that to you with the mouse. So we have point C and point A. A would be a loose bearing. That means it allows translation in Y, but translation in X is blocked. So you, you would have just a little, you know what? Uh, let's open that with paint because I think I can then quickly um, draw in here as well. That makes more sense. Okay, uh, where's my pencil? So basically what I missed here was um, a little force here. So this would be FXA and this would be FC, F, no, F, X, C and F, Y, C. Yeah, you, you get the idea. You have two forces at the fixed bearing and you have one force at the loose bearing. Now, basically what I did now is a sum of moments and sum of forces to get the reaction forces. Sum of moments, just very quickly how to do this. You focus here on point A and now every force which is going through the center, that means Fy would go through the center and also Fxa would go through the center. So you can just ignore those two. And you left with P and you left with Fxc. And those two are now here, P and F, C, X, or F, X, C. And you just then see, all right, P takes a motion around this point, which is clockwise. That means negative because counterclockwise is mathematically positive, And that's why you have a negative here. Same goes for the F, C, X. So also you have a force here, like I, draw that in here and then you have also this motion that means um, also negative then you can go and also make this is a mistake I made so p is negative in y direction but you don't have to put a direction here in so that means you have minus 40 kilonewtons as fcx so basically if I just point that in in green this would be the direction of cx or fcx and then you have some of forces because this is then the opposite of this because in X it should be zero. So you get FAX is 40 kilonewtons if this is minus 40 kilonewtons. Same thing with the plus 30, that's equivalent to the minus 30 here. So um, plus 30 would be this thing. So basically you're left with those kind of um, reaction forces. Now let's see if this is the case. Um, basically, the model should be ready to run. So I go on structure and of analyze on analyzes. Stiffness is all right and just run it. I run it in SimSolid because it's a lot faster. And this should be it. Now, first check is plausibility. Does this look, does this look plausible? This looks plausible, I would say, yeah. If, if a part of a model is, is uh, ah, yeah, the pin, <laughs> I'm not sure what, what the pin is doing, but uh, it stays together. So that's, that's all that I wanted the pin to do. Um, yeah, but basically um, plausibility check is if, if just a part of the model is moving, then the, a lot of, you should be careful. If uh, the whole model is, is moving like with a, gradient from the loading point towards the bearing point that seems plausible and also direction and also quantity let's see that's one millimeter of movement with 30 kilonewtons of so 300 kilos on this structure and one millimeter of movement don't underestimate steel steel is tough so yeah just get a feeling for it so seems right to me and now let's check the reaction forces basically what the student wanted to, to know how to do this here. It's a bit tricky. So you have here the reaction forces, right? If you click that here, it comes up with, and basically now it comes up already like you would expect it to, but you have to check here on force components that you have this selected. Um, because standard, there's no components and then you're left with this and this is not really what you want. So you want to have the components. It's a shame that it's not really um, put in here in components. I'm not sure if, if there's a possibility to change that here. 
but I don't see it right now, to be honest. Uh, but you can also see it here. So Y and Z is negligible, nothing here. And we have 40 kilonewtons in X. So that means FAX would be positive 40 kilonewtons. And exactly that's what we have predicted. So another one here, you have 50 kilonewtons in total. X would be minus 40 kilonewtons. So F X C would be minus 40. That's here. Also correct. And then F C Y uh, would be plus 30. And that's wrong. Yeah, because it's F set here. Uh, yeah, pay attention here. Set is the direction of going up. And here it was it was y. But um, in this case, fz is 30 kilonewtons also positive. That means that makes sense. Also makes sense because the, the resultant of those two components is then in the direction of the force. And also, if you just understand it that from a structural perspective, you're pulling down here, this will get compression and this will get tension. So this is the reaction of being pulled. And the other one is the reaction of being pushed into the wall. So basically, that's that. Okay, so basically what we covered, what we covered here is going back to the example is how, how to get the components of the reaction force for a simple model. Do a hand calc, please do that. It's a skill you will need in the industry and then check that with the components in, um, in Inspire or any other tool you will use. Um, make like model checks, see if the displacement looks fine and uh, something like that. Yeah. All right. So, and um, yeah, apart from that, I think that's all the student wanted to know in this particular exercise. If there's any questions about those kind of exercises, please let me know in the comments. If there's some similar problem you have, um, just send them over. I will maybe do a, another video series about it. And if you enjoyed that, please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a follow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.